Hi, I'm Tom Friss, uh, out here in McKinney, Texas, and uh, today we're going to uh, go out into my beehives, my apiary, and we're going to primarily, we're going to do some things around the Varroa mite, which has been quite a blight on the bees in America. So we're going to do some powdered sugar treatment, we're going to check out the frames, and we're just going to take a look at hives in general and some of the things we do to manage hives. So uh, we're going to get suited up and go out and have some fun. The background on Varroa mites is basically somewhere in the 60s they started to become uh, a, a pest and a problem to the beehives. So we, um, um, over the last, I don't know, what is it, 40 years, uh, they have grown and grown and pretty, pretty much gone worldwide. Once they got to the United States, and I think it was somewhere back in the mid 80s, um, they basically wiped out, I don't know, 99% of all the uh, what are called feral hives, uh, beehives, honey beehives in America. Uh, just devastated them. Even today, um, there's a lot of problems with varroa mites, and, and many of you are familiar with CCD, the colony collapse disorder. And basically, um, what they find is 30, 40 percent, maybe more of the time, that ultimately it's not CCD, but it's varroa mites. The key to keeping healthy bees, I think, and I'm, I'm learning this, is to have good hive management, number one, um, which means get out to your hives, check your hives, and so forth. Two, um, try a variety of treatments, and three, which is what I'm trying to do, is I want to get away from pesticides. Um, I don't think pesticides, especially ones that could harm humans and get into the food, um, as well as harm the bees, is a good idea. So, um, so we're going to go out to the hives. I got my smoker ready and ready to go because I found that it's better to have it than not. Um, and uh, we'll get out to the hives. And if we find any mites, one thing you might note is um, the mites, in proportion to our body, on the on the bee they look really small, but in proportion to our body, they're about this big. So you can imagine having a tick on your back about this big. And so that's why it's important we want to get out there and see if we've got them and then treat them appropriately if we need to. So let's head on out and see if we can't find some mites and treat them. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to open up the hive. We're going to go in and do a little bit of inspection. And then um, we're going to follow up with a sugar treatment. And what we're going to be doing is first I'm going to take a really hard look at the hive and see if, um, see if I can spot any varroa mites just by looking at it. The varroa mites in particular, they like the drone bees. So there's the queen, and then there's the worker bees, the female worker bees, and then there's the drone, the male. The male are the largest of the, of the worker and the female. The males are very large, and they actually don't sting. Their only purpose is to mate with the queen. So for some reason, the varroa mites like those drone cells the best. And I think it's because they're just really large. I don't know. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to get a little smoke going. You can hear that nice hum of in industry going on and there's uh, there's a bunch of bees for you anyway this is the uh, telescoping cover and this is supposed to protect it from sunlight and our radiant heat I don't know if it does or not but I bought it so I'm using it and then all these bees why they're up here I do not know but you'll see when I smoke them you'll see them all of a sudden start running for the hills see that it's not just it's not just the heat of the smoke it's it's their instinct to run away. So I get a little smoke under there. And this is the cover board. Get a little smoke under there. And the idea is not to kill any bees while you're doing this. Um, oh, there's one. There's a dive bomber just went after me. Um, it's not to kill any bees while you're doing this because um, they, uh, they release a scent and it's an attack scent. And so it'll get them all going. And we don't want that. So just to give you an idea of the difference of the size of bees, right here where my thumb is, if you can see that, that's a drone right there. See how big that bee is? And uh, you'll notice that his head is really large and black. Let me see if I can grab him. Hard to do with gloves on. Um, and then the rest of these are pretty much worker bees. So that's the difference in the sizes. Now the queen bee is even longer than the, uh, the drone bee. There he is. That's a drone the male bee and you could grab them with your hand they won't sting you okay so in any hive what you what you the terminology and this is something I always confuse but the bottom hive and it's usually what they call the deep and that hive is where the queen and the eggs and the and the honey need to be and that's like the the core of the hive um, and then after that you have additional uh, wood frames and these are called supers even though this one's the same size as this one this is called a super. So we're going to go into these hives and pull frames out and we're going to look for drone cell brood. 
and we might be able to cut some of that out and take a look to see if there's varroa mite in them. So this is a frame, and this frame has what's called a piece of foundation in it, and that foundation is shaped like the, how the bees want to create their comb, and it encourages the bees to come in, and what they do is they, they come in, they eat honey, and they secrete wax off their, off their side, their abdomen, and they pull that wax off, and then they go start building the comb out. So this is a relatively new one in the hive, so they haven't quite pulled that out yet. So now we see a more, uh, a more drawn out frame um, with the wax, and you can see in here, you can see how they're collecting nectar, and they're filling it into those cells, and they've done it on both sides, and they're working it. And so what they're doing is basically, they're going out, they're grabbing nectar off the flowers, they're bringing it in here, and they're storing it. And what I really always find fascinating, and I don't know how they know how to do this, but these, these um, cells are at an 11 degree angle. I believe it's 11 degree angle up so that nothing falls out. So somehow they know how to build the comb and get it up at an angle that's just right for them to work it without losing too much space. So we've taken a look at some of the supers. You get an idea of how the comb is pulled out. But this comb is meant for honey and storing honey. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this super off. We're going to get into here and see if we can find any brood which is where the eggs have been laid and where the mites would be to suck on the larva, that's where the mites are gonna live. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get into the areas where the mites are living, and that's what we're gonna do next. So the reason you need these hive tools is um, the bees go out and they get this stuff called propolis, which I believe is bee, is um, the bees go out to the trees and collect sap, and it's almost like a glue, and they seal up all the cracks in the hive because they don't want germs getting in, and they don't want foreign, uh, you know, other bugs and so forth getting in there. So they, they use this to, um, to help protect their hive. I'm told it's as sterile as an operating room, but I'm not sure which operating room they were talking about. Okay, right away we've got some brood here. I mean, some in a, this is a larva, and we'll see more of this when we get into it. Looks like they're doing a little work here. This right here, this uh, larva that was on the side and pulled off, People actually uh, buy this and eat it. They consider it a, uh, it's a protein and they consider it some type of nutritive health restore. I don't know, but um, you guys want to try it? No? Okay. All right. Um, so let's go on into these frames and um, the bees are getting kind of irritated with the process here. So I think I'll just skip to the chase and get on down here. Although this one right here looks like it might have some drone brood in it. So why don't I go ahead and pull that out and we might be getting to what we're after, um, where the mites are. Or actually, hopefully the mites aren't. Whee! Okay, so now we're making a little progress. All right, so now I got some drone cells and I've got some uh, brood. The queen's been up here planting eggs. So, um, what you see right here is the brood, and these are capped, what's called cap cells. And so that larva, that white larva that we just looked at, is actually under that cap cell, and it's growing right now. And if there's a varroa mite in there, that mite's in there sucking on that and breeding. These are uh, drone brood cells, and those are the large males that we saw earlier. And the tendency is, is for the varroa mite to get into those cells. And the drone bees tend to be planted on the outside of the hive and the outside of the frames because they don't need that many drones and drones are basically useless to them except for breeding the queen. So there's only about 5-10% of the hive is drone cells and in the winter time in fact they kick a lot of the drones out and, and basically kill them off because they don't need them in the hive. But almost every one of these cells that's empty or looks empty has an egg in it or a small larva in it. So that's how, they, that's how the queen produces and then they need to have honey and pollen right close to them while they're doing this so they can feed the bee, um, so they can feed their population. So I'm going to take off this what's called a full super. This is a, uh, this is a, a, a shallow super and then there's a medium and this is a full. I'm going to take this off and we're going to find the, the, a lot more brood cells down here, um, hopefully, and uh, see what's going on. But there's going to be an awful lot of bees buzzing around so hopefully we can uh, do this without too much fanfare. Oh yeah. Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna pull one of these out and see how well the queen's doing, pulling the uh, laying eggs and how the brood's doing. And, oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, now, on any one of these, I believe are somewhere around 2,500 to 3,000 bees on each side. So what you're looking at right now is about 5,000 bees on both sides. And the other thing you'll notice on this side is you'll see all this cat brood right here. And that means the queen has absolutely gone to town and that's the refresh of the bees, you know? So, so you see what I'm talking about? Look at all that. That's, that's all bees that are about to come. So in the next five to 10 days, these suckers are gonna come out. Well, the good news is it's been raining a little bit and so we're gonna have a nectar flow and they're gonna get on it and get to work. So what we've got here now is a queen cell. And uh, there's a queen in there most likely. And what they're doing is, is they're growing so fast and so large. I'm, I'm just guessing, but there's at least 50,000 bees in this hive already. And that's a good strong hive, okay? So what, the, what they do is they, they swarm. And when they swarm, they produce queens and then the queens battle and then the last queen goes down and um, puts out a scent and the worker bees and about half the hive along with the um, older queen will take off and they'll go look for another nest to, to, uh, to work in. And the idea of swarming, it's protective. It's to allow them to um, uh, be able to propagate their species. So what happens is, is the new queen um, once she comes out, the old queen basically takes off with about half the hive and they eat a bunch of honey and they get up in a big swarm and you'll see them. I caught one in a tree here the other day. And I'll tell you what, they're, um, um, they're looking to make a new home. And so they take off from that hive and then this new queen that they've got going, she goes out and mates with a drone, comes back and starts laying eggs. And the, the new queens lay eggs somewhere around 1,500 eggs a day they'll lay for the hive. And they'll do that for two or three years and then generally they die and they need to be replaced. <laughs>